Hey what's up guys, it's Nick2 and today I'll be showing you guys what is by far and away the absolute best build in all of Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. With this build you can kill literally anything you want in just a few seconds on max difficulty on Chaos level 20 and just absolutely fly through Chaos Chambers faster than literally any other character can. I'm sure a lot of people are immediately going to point out that I am using the Buffmeister, so of course I'm going to be doing a lot of damage since it currently has you know an interaction that causes it to buff you way more than it actually should. While of course I'll talk about this later, how it works, etc, I actually made a version of this build that doesn't utilize the broken interaction at all, so when or if that gets patched, you'll still be able to do extremely good damage, and that's without a perfectly optimized setup as well, so you don't have to worry about taking advantage of something and feeling cheesy if you don't want to, the build is still extremely good regardless, and I'll go over all of the different ways to set it up. This build is also fantastic for early endgame progression, and if you just take advantage of the core elements, you'll have a breeze getting up to Chaos level 20. If you guys are interested in a more spell-oriented build, I'd highly recommend you guys watch my previous spell shop build video that is also extremely good for leveling and early endgame progression. I also plan to make a ton more builds for all of the other characters, so please comment down below which character you guys would like me to cover next, and whichever gets the most comments is what I'll make a video on tomorrow. With all that out of the way, let's just get right into the build. Alright, so I plan to go over absolutely everything, so when it comes to weapons, gear, shields, rings, jewelry, uh, class relics, spells, etc. I'm going to go over absolutely everything, so you guys should leave this video knowing exactly what you need to do without having any questions. First of all, I want to talk about how uh, Buffmeister works. So, the interaction with it that is currently broken is if you're playing Spellshot and you're using the Ambihextrus, some guy commented, I hate that all the YouTubers say Ambihextrius, so for you, I'll try to say it properly this time. But if you're using Ambihextrius, basically what happens is that, um, so by default, what Buffmeister is supposed to do is, is as it, you can see on the tooltip there, it says increase direct damage dealt by 155. So you're supposed to be able to just use it, and then it is going to increase the base damage of whatever you're using. So like your gun, for example, it's going to increase the base damage by 155, which by default is extremely strong. What's broken about it is if you put it in your right hand slot, what's going to happen is this buff damage is going to actually pull from your other spell. So ideally you just get another spell that has extremely high base damage, and instead of increasing by 155, 55, you end up increasing by 4,335. The way to work around this being broken or to not abuse it is one, you can use two buff meisters simultaneously, which is really good because they are going to stack on top of each other, while the interaction is basically where you're pulling the spell damage from the other one, right? If you have two buff meisters, you're not really benefiting all that much because the base damage is pretty much the same. But if you use them both simultaneously, you are going to get both buffs. So this is not going to be taking advantage of any sort of bugs or anything. This is exactly how it's intended to work. And with this build, you don't really need your spells doing a lot of damage. You're pretty, your primary focus is just turning spell damage into gun damage and turning movement speed into gun damage and making your guns do an insane amount of damage. So using this is an extremely optimal setup and is probably what I'm going to be using once the bug itself gets fixed. But for now, while the bug still does exist, um, if you don't have two buff meisters, which I imagine a lot of you guys won't, all you have to do is just put your buff meister in the left slot, and then you can put on whatever spell you want in the right slot, and then it's also not going to take advantage of that bug. So, as you can see, I'll just give you a little example. If I'm using the build normally, this is obviously without any sort of um, buffs or anything like that, I shoot the guy, let me turn on uh, damage numbers, I shoot the guy and I used uh, my buff meister in the left slot, right? And the average damage number, like 5,677, you know, nothing crazy, I don't have any buffs, like the skill's out of control once you have some buffs. But then if I swap the skill placements, now my buff master is going to pull from my left side slot, so uh, let me, I have to wait, I don't have any skill points in, so I gotta wait for my skills to reset. Alright, so now that it's in the right slot, you can see that I'm gonna shoot, and then I'm doing... <laughs> Uh, do I even need to say anything? I mean, look at look at the the stark difference here. I can't really get a clear damage number. Is that 175,000? I can't I can't even tell honestly. But clearly, that's significantly higher than it used to be. So, again, if you don't want to take advantage of that bug, uh, that's what you got to do. But otherwise, for this video, I am going to be taking advantage of it. But I do have gameplay clips at the start of the video, not using it. So feel free to do whatever you want. That's how the interaction works. Let's get into the skill tree, and then we'll get into all the gear. I'll do my best to be quick about this. 
but I do want to explain everything that's important here so that you guys fully understand it. So for our secondary class, we want to be going with the Stabomancer. The reason for this is he has a really a lot of really good stuff in here that is going to primarily give us a whole bunch of extra gun damage, as well as a lot of movement speed feeding into that gun damage so we can run extremely fast, which overall this is really good. And we're also going to be getting the class feat that is going to increase our crit chance by a flat 30%, which is extremely strong, especially when we're using our gun, because with our gun, we don't have a lot of crit by default, and this will pair very well with spell shot. So Stabomancer is what you want to go. We'll talk about what we want to do in that tree later, but let's first talk about what we want to do in the spell shot tree. So normally with a spell build, like I previously posted, the most important thing is getting spell sniper for that extra crit chance. You don't actually need that this time around because you're going full into gun damage. So immediately you want to go into magic bullets, which is going to turn all the spell damage that you get into extra gun damage. So getting spell damage in the form of our spell weaving stacks by default, we're going to get a lot of these stacks and we're going to get even more with some class mods, etc. And this is all going to convert back into gun damage. So overall, getting a lot of spell damage is going to be really beneficial for us. And then we're going to just put the rest of our points into reload speed. You want to ignore mage armor because ideally we don't, we are not going to have our shield up at all. So it completely ignore mage armor. This is really good for survivability, but um, we're going to be using a shield where when our shield is depleted, we get extra damage. If you don't have that shield yet, then you can certainly use this for survivability. Those are our points, we're just going to dump into the reload speed because reloading really fast is nice. And then we'll get some points into the rate of fire per spell weaving stack. Action skill cooldown rate doesn't matter because we're going to be resetting our skill cooldown immediately with the capstone trait. Going into glass cannon here, this is going to increase our spell damage directly, but we're no, lab, no longer going to automatically recharge our ward. This is perfect, not only do we get free damage, but we also aren't going to recharge our shield anymore which is directly going to benefit how this build is going to function because of that shield, because we don't want our shield active, right? Then we're just going to put the rest of the points into rate of fire. We have a couple extra points here. I would just put into action skill cooldown, right? It's literally one point, doesn't matter. The next point that we want to go into is high thread count to increase the amount of spell whipping stacks that we get, which of course, again, is going to increase our spell damage and also going to increase our fire rate. So this pretty much just flat increases our damage. The next thing that we're going to put some points into is Imbued Weapon. Whenever you cast a spell, your gun is going to deal bonus damage of that spell's element. Later on, we have this tree here, Exploit Their Weakness, where based on how many status effects the enemy has, they're going to take flat extra damage, and we're going to be able to apply all status effects by having a left side spell that is a different spell from the right side spell. So our Buff Meister is going to give us whatever element, and that's going to apply to our weapon our weapon is going to be a different element and then our left side skill is going to be a different element so you're going to be able to get three different status effects here and be able to take full advantage of this so that's why we put some points into imbued weapon here and then we're actually going to end up ignoring double knot because we are not actually critting with our spells we're just using our weapon we want to go into one slot one kill which is going to increase the amount of gun damage that we get per spell weaving stack so by default that's going to give us a whole bunch of extra damage the rest of our points we can put into warcaster here you could very easily ditch imbued weapon at max stacks and put all five stacks into warcaster it really depends on what weapon you're using if you're having troubles with not having to like manually reload manually reloading isn't too bad because as you can see i have a whole bunch of points into prestigitation here um but if you don't have all those points there and the reloading is really annoying you only need a couple points in this really just to get it to where you get that extra spell effect or status effect in the first place you don't really need the amount of damage that it does is fairly insignificant anyway and this is mainly beneficial for bosses and stuff so you can put the rest of the points into warcaster then we just want to get sever the thread where our gun crits have a chance to instantly reset all of our cooldowns buffmeister by default has an extremely long cooldown of about 41 seconds here so this is fairly um necessary or mandatory rather but as you can see the second that i crit i just immediately get my spells back it does have a five second internal cooldown but you should be able to keep this up fairly often to where you can just spam your buffmeister over and over again in terms of what we're going to go into into the stabomancer Pretty much we're going to increase our movement speed by a flat amount and then we're just going to increase our gun damage and spell damage by default overall obviously really strong and then we're going to put some points into swift death here this is just going to increase our damage the faster that we're moving and because we're increasing our movement speed here and with some enchants and stuff um, this is just going to increase our damage by a flat insane amount and then the rest of our points here we're going to put into exploit their weakness pretty much just for bosses but we're also going to apply those status effects to enemies extremely quickly so by default, they'll be taking 18% more damage if we're applying three status effects to them immediately, which is going to be really good. 
and then we're just going to put some points into arsenal because we have some points left over the main thing that we're trying to get here is elusive where you can now shoot and sprint simultaneously so you can sprint and get that extra movement speed therefore taking max advantage of swift death which is going to increase your damage overall by an insane amount the rest of our points um, you really only have two you can kind of do whatever you want with it uh, personally i put one into arsenal and then what did i do before um, i think i may have put one into contagion where you have a chance to apply a random status effect to an enemy so you could get a total of four status effects um, personally, because I am using the bug, I'll probably just put this point into Warcaster. If you're not using the bug though, and bosses are taking a little bit longer to kill, you could do this and then get another 6% on top with Exploit Their Weakness, and you just do a little bit of extra damage with that extra status effect. The chaining status effects to nearby enemies, is I didn't notice it do anything a single time, because it doesn't really do that much damage. The status effect itself doesn't do a whole lot of damage. So... And the enemies usually in Chaos Chambers are pretty spread out, so I don't really think that's all that great. In terms of the gear itself, so first off, let's talk about weapons, and then we'll talk about uh, skills, etc. So, with weapons, what's really great about this build is you can use pretty much anything that you want. I've been using a lot of uh, cryo weapons, but these these ones that I have equipped are my favorite. The Liquid Cooling of Impatience is really good. A uh, Glittering Queen's Cry is actually insanely strong. Um, this thing is pretty good too. Uh, I'm not using this, I'm actually just have it equipped for the enchant, but of course you could use a nightshade, a cryo weapon like times 4 is also going to be extremely strong and is going to reset your cooldowns near immediately. There's a ton of uh, weapon options here, uh, the saw blade weapons are really good, the crossbow pistols are really good. Uh, personally my favorite has been the glittering queen's cry so far, but honestly all of these weapons are really good. For the melee weapon, you definitely want to get yourself a pickaxe. Just by default, whenever you pick up gold, it's going to increase your movement speed. And of course, movement speed is going to give us increased damage. So this is pretty much the only pickaxe, or melee weapon rather, we can put on that's actually going to directly increase our damage. In terms of enchants, we'll talk about all that stuff at the end. But as you can see, the main stuff that we're doing is just increasing our overall damage. For the skill itself, I have a fire buff meister on. You can get dark magic and you can get corrosive. I don't know if frost exists. If you guys have gotten a frost one, let me know because I'd be really interested in that. Um, ideally, any sort of buffmeister is really good. I'm using a fire one because I have a um, I have a really good necklace here that is going to increase my fire damage, and fire is particularly good because it's effective against flesh and does extra damage. This is also a good roll. It has two spell charges. It's pretty rare to get one that has two spell charges, but that's what you'd want to look out for. But any element is really good uh the dark magic one is particularly strong because you can restore health via damage and then if you can um get some extra dark magic damage increase that'll be really good but any sort of buff buff meister is going to be good you just want to make sure that you're going to increase the damage of buff meister buff meister's damage is going to get increased not by spell damage not by action skill damage but it will be increased by just flat damage so increasing all damage dealt for example so as you can see on the spell here i have increased all damage dealt that is going to increase the buff that buffmeister gives us increasing damage to fire will increase it because it's doing fire damage by default stuff like that is what's going to be really good for the other spell in the other slot if you're going to take advantage of the bug you literally just want any spell that has really high base damage i have this calamity here calamity pretty much always rolls at high base damage this is really easy to get if you don't have a high base damage one you can go farm pig wart and i believe he drops a barrel maker that's pretty high base damage uh, otherwise i would just keep farming chaos chambers spending all your stuff on uh, spells which you'll probably need to do anyway while trying to get buffmeister i have another one here that is corrosive that is going to have really high base damage I'd recommend having something that is a different element because, like I said, so as you can see right here, when I cast Corrosive and then I cast my Buffmeister and then I shoot this guy, I'm getting Corrosive, Cryo, and Fire all simultaneously, which is then going to increase my overall damage because I'm using the exploit their weakness. So getting all those extra status effects is pretty good, but I unfortunately got a pretty bad enchant on this, so I've just still been using the Calamity anyway, and I don't really need all that damage regardless. In terms of your class item, I have a pretty good one here, which is going to increase my, it's going to reduce my crit chance by 50%, but increase my crit damage by 50%. And I have a lot of crit chance, not only just on my gear by default, but also because I'm a Stabomancer secondary class, and also just with, um, in the hero stats, I have some pretty good crit chance. So this is overall pretty good. Another really good one that I found uh, that I actually was using for a while here was the uh, Calamity of the Hone Talon. 
Another stat to go for is increasing the amount of damage that you get for movement speed because you end up running extremely fast. So if you get that extra damage for the movement speed, uh, that ends up being a whole bunch of damage. As you can see, I'm running really, really quick here. But once you end up picking some gold up and you uh, use this other enchant on your gun that's going to increase your movement speed by 30% after a kill, you get insanely fast. So increasing the damage that you do while you're fast is by always just going to be really strong. Uh, but the main reason, or not the main reason, but something that's also really good about this is that this one is going to give me another high thread count point so that I get additional spell weaving stacks, which is just flat extra gun damage. I, it's hard for me to tell which one of these is better because I like this one because it also gives me increased fire damage for each unique enemy hit, stacking up to 10 times, which would be pretty much double damage because I'm using the Buffmeister here. It's hard to tell. These are the things that I would recommend trying to spec into. It can be pretty hard to find something. I would go for gun crit chance, uh, spell damage, all damage dealt. Uh, actually, not spell damage. Uh, all damage dealt, gun damage, uh, crit chance, those sorts of things are going to be pretty strong for you. As you can see on my necklace here, I just have fire damage and spell shot power, and then all damage dealt, really good. The health thing is actually pretty good for survivability. I just spawn a little skeep guy to shoot whenever I go down, which is really nice. And then I have this insanely good ring here where when my ward is not full or my shield is not full, it's going to increase the damage I get by 100%. So this is going to give me 34% extra damage. And since I'm mainly using my pistol, getting the pistol crit damage there is really good. But obviously, if you're using like an SMG or an assault rifle or whatever, you would want um, that respective role. On my other ring, I just have gun damage again, and I have pistol crit damage and pistol magazine size since I really like using my pistol. For my shield, this is one of the most important things. We're using the Cursed Wit. This is going to increase our damage dealt by 100% whenever our shield is depleted. So overall, that's going to be really good. And we're not really going to have our shield up very often. And this pairs perfectly with the Focus Moon Ring of the Vision. If I get two of these, that would be perfect. In terms of the enchants, as you can see, I just have stuff that overall increases my damage on spell cast increased damage. After casting a spell, 30% crit chance on my weapons, which is extremely good. And then I have on my other guns, increased fire damage. After getting a kill, increased movement speed. On spell cast, increased elemental damage. On spell cast, increased frost damage. And then on spell cast, increased gun damage. Those are all the things that you want to look for. There's also a spell shot one that I think is good. I forget exactly what it does. I was checking if I had it on me, but I didn't. But I found these shields that are also pretty good that increase your fire rate reload speed. And also this other enchant when your health is below 50%, regen some of it and you gain extra damage. Overall, there's a lot of things that are extremely strong here. It's pretty intuitive what is really good, just increasing your gun damage and overall damage is what you want to be aiming for. That's pretty much going to be it for the video. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave it down in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to leave you guys with some gameplay here so you can just see how it plays out in an actual real life scenario. But of course, as you can see, the damage is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, I plan to make a whole bunch of other videos, so again, please feel free to comment down below the next build that you would like to see from me, and whichever character gets the most comments is what I will make a video on tomorrow. Thank you guys so much for watching, feel free to watch my previous videos if you want to know how to level up really fast, and yeah, I will see you guys later.